Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our next conversation is uh, moving to your state where a uh, crisis, of course, um, uh, took place over the weekend at the Shasha Market. Uh, the governor of the state, of course, declared a curfew and the vice president uh, made statements also condemning the activities and the crisis over there. The Odua People's Congress has, of course, uh, put out a statement asking that the Nigerian government investigate the perpetrators of the crisis and uh, brings peace to Oyo State. We have uh, with us this morning Mr. Samsin Akindele, uh, General Manager Fresh FM. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. All right, good morning. I'm going to start with uh, Aneta. Okay, so um, let's talk about the events at the Shasha Market over the weekend. You visited the market right after, you know, the clash. What did you see on ground? Yeah. Well, I, I saw a lot of destruction. Uh, destruction of people's livelihoods. You know, uh, places of residence, shops, vehicles, especially those... Uh, uh, trucks that came from the north that brought uh, food stuff. Some of them were burnt, you know, completely. So, of course, the governor had uh, had announced a coffee. I think Friday night, but uh, it's like there was no one to really make the coffee to be of effect. So these guys must have come in the middle of the night, and um, they were just destroying a lot of things that they could lay their hands on. That also gave for some looting. Because when I spoke to some of the shop owners, they also got calls. Some of them got calls around four years that uh, the whole market was on fire and they had to rush to that place. But the woodlands would not even allow them you know, to move close to any of those shops. Whether you are outside, you are Igbo. Every outside, I mean Yoruba, everybody was just you know, doing their thing. The security operatives, they got there late, and um, before they could come, the damage had been done. Okay. Uh, Mr. Akindele, you, you spoke to eyewitnesses. What did they say was the cause of that clash? Yes. See, be, be beyond what we know that caused this one, which was an, an unresolved, according to what I gathered, unresolved issues. You know, between a Yoruba man who is a cobbler, a, a Hausa man who is a cat pusher. You know, one thing led to another. The Hausa man allegedly hit the Yoruba man with whatever he used, and the man died the next day. And that was the beginning. But to, to, to get to the root of this is to look beyond what, has been, what, what just happened. There has been mutual suspicion. Like we've been having in other markets where you have Hausa, you know, with Yoruba traders and all that. My 12 in Lagos, for instance, you have um, other places like that. So it's the same thing in Ibadan. Shasha market has to be a food stuff market where you can buy any kind of raw food coming from the north. That's the first port of call for anybody bringing food into your state, at least through or your commercial road, you know, and a lot of people will go there and buy things wholesale. You see bags of uh, uh, baskets of tomatoes and other things, yam, tubers, and what have you. You know, so it has always been a place where people cohabit, especially Yoruba traders and the Hausa traders. But you know, like we've been having in this country, there is mutual distrust amongst us. Any any little spark. People will remember where they come from and they begin right. to fight. And that's the root cause that the government must, you know, really do something about. It's not the first time they will have this kind of clash. From what I gathered, that it, it has always been a almost a yearly thing. It's just that it has never reached this scale, you know, yeah. that we're talking about now. So, so Mr. Mr. Akindele, that, that, that's where... That's where I want to go next. Um, it seems like the tension has okay. been heightened lately. It seems like there's more and more of this, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, you know, triggers every now and then yeah. that might lead mm -hmm. to a, an even bigger one. Um, mm -hmm. what, what happened in all your state, as sad as it looked, you know, you, like you said, is already showing uh, how much um, divides exist. So um, how, mm -hmm. what would you say has led us uh, to where it is today? And where do you think the government could have done or played a better role to ensure that, you know, it, it doesn't degenerate into where it currently is? 
like like some leadership scholars have always been telling us, um, everything rises and falls on leadership. Uh, we we've not our leaders have not shown the leadership here that should connect us, that should unite us. See, you can use Chacha as an example where people just go a bit. Nobody cares about where the other person comes from. You just buy your tomatoes or you buy your yam and you walk away. But the political leaders are the ones dividing this country because of whatever reasons they have. Maybe the, the struggle for power and what have you. So they usually remind us where we come from. And I, always, I want to tell people of Nigeria that, look, it's not about the peasants that are fighting today. Because you won't find President Muhammadu Buhari's children in that market. Prophet Oshibadu's children will not go to that market. You won't find any of the governors also using that kind of place to buy their stuff. It's the ordinary Nigerian. So why, why all this? So the leadership must not talk, must not just talk. They must act. And when they are acting, they should not act selectively. And that's what people there have been saying, that look, they, they allege that some of the Hausa boys there, they usually come to the market with uh, knives, with some weapons. They, they didn't mention guns, but they've been telling the security operatives, but nobody has been doing anything. The governor of Ohio State, well, in his usual style, you know, a popular governor who still wants to remain popular, is not stepping on the ground on time to make sure that they need this kind of thing in the board. And that is what is lacking. The problem is not with the ordinary people. It's the leadership. If you show them the path to go and you are ready to enforce your own laws, look, imagine you declare the curfew and it was not respected. What kind of government is that? So from the center down, you know, to individual states, we have crises that are waiting to happen. If the center will not act you know, uh, uh, proactively if the governors are not on, you know, putting their foot on ground on time because uh, um, concerning, they came in very late. Okay. The damage had been done before they came in. They brought Operation Boss, it was too late. The police came, it was too late. The damage had been done. So the problem lies with the leadership. All right. Let them not divide the people. Let them act on time. When people are bound to have issues amongst themselves, but what do you do as a government? You try to tr mitigate it so that it does not happen at all, or when it happens, you can control it. Okay. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on comments, you know, flying all around social media that police officers who are deployed to maintain law and order be began to take sides with one particular ethnic group? Would you say this, I mean, from your assessment of what happened on ground, would you say this was fact or just another misinformation just to, you know, put some more ethnic coloration to this crisis? No, I, I heard that. I, I didn't see that happen. Because I, I, of course, as a journalist, you also have to be close to some of these policemen, especially the public relations officers. I didn't see that. Um, I, at the same time, I didn't just listen to the police side. I also talked to people. See, what is going on in Ohio State is that since the NSAS thing happened, this is the part of the aftermath of the NSAS, the police in Ohio State have not gone back to work fully, even after we had a change of guard in the CP. We now have a woman that is there. It's still the same thing because Ibadan happened to be one of those cities where policemen were killed, and the policemen are still, you know, uh, uh, vexing. They, 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 they are still thinking that they, 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 they have not taken care of them the way they should. That, in fact, they were asking whether all of them were bad officers, that they have some good officers. Why did they have to begin this kind of treatment? And that's where the governor needs to step in. So whether they took charge with one ethnic group or the other, I didn't see that, but I heard people, some people saying it. But right. you know, you have to be very careful here. I, I, I told someone to show me a video where a policeman allegedly slapped one man. He said he couldn't get a video. Some people said another person had a video. You know, when you, even some eyewitnesses might not be credible. So we have to be very careful so that we don't escalate the crisis that is going on in the country presently. All so right. maybe it's another misinformation or disinformation there. I don't know. But I tell you, the police are yet to get back to work fully in Ohio State. And that's where this, this matter escalated up to this level. Yeah, it's uh, you know, something that we've always spoken about, you know, the response to mm -hmm. crisis. 
the mm -hmm. response of the Nigerian security agencies when there's um, a crisis in certain parts, you know, and of course compare that with what happened at the Lekki toll gate over the weekend and uh, the show of force uh, mm -hmm. that you, you could see there. But there's yeah. something else that I want to, you know, get your thoughts on, you know, which I think is also very important. Um, as I've started to see it online, there's a campaign that seems to be starting online. It uh, says, hashtag the North remembers and uh, hashtag stop killing northerners. Mm. It seems to be drawing a narrative or unsympathy towards a narrative that northerners are being attacked in the southwest and in uh, other parts of the country. Um, do you see this as dangerous, you know, if this narrative continues to grow? And how can that be tackled? It is very dangerous, very scary. It's going to be uh, counterproductive, and nobody will be immune from the escalation if it does escalate. Uh, again, I want to I want to beg the leadership of this country, President Mahmoud Buhari, to wake up. If he needs to come to the south to talk to people, not just to the people from the north. I I don't want to see my president as the president of the north. I still see him as the president of Nigeria. But his body language so far has been hot and cold. When you, when you have a kind of look up attitude to issues like this, then you are, you are causing trouble. So please, if you cannot come down here, you should send people. Find out why, because it's not the first time we're having this. Let nobody say it's because uh, these people are in place, that's why you're having this crisis. I, I covered the K to my 12 crisis in 2002. So I, I know what I'm talking about. But why is it going up now? It's because some people are going to gain from this. If we, if we allow this to get into a civil war, let me tell you that uh, <laughs> some people are there to, to sell bullets. Some are there to sell guns. These are the people, if you, if you, if you read the book, economics of war, you will understand what happens. It's an industry on its own. Some people want us to fight as a people. Some people want to leave this country, set up their own nation, and they think it's only war that, that, that can happen. So the leadership should not just take all these things slightly. They should be serious about it. Okay. What are the things causing this? If you cannot lay your hands on it, go to the locals and ask questions. They, they are deep-seated you know, uh, uh, issues that some people have that it's only need a spike, they will begin to attack themselves. So again, it's about leader. And to the followership, see, uh, before I, I had my own car, I will, I will go through commercial buses. I never asked for once where the driver of that vehicle is from. You just believe that this driver, driver will take you to your destination. That is the way we should take the leadership not from where anybody comes from. Because the ordinary people, they live together. Go, look at market, a uh, uh, large equal market where they sell spare parts. You have Yoruba people there, you have Igbo people there, but anytime they also have issues. It's also because some ethnic bigots, some of them politicians, will step on this matter and begin to tell you, some people will say Lagos is no man's land. Then another group will come and say, look, we can live anywhere. Why are we always in this kind of situation? Leadership failure. If we correct that, every other thing, you know, we fall in line. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Samson Akindili, the general manager, Fresh FM, Nigeria. We appreciate your time and thoughts on the breakfast. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. God bless All right. You. Stay with us. Um, we've talked crisis, crisis, crisis back to back this morning from yeah. Mensars to uh, the Mietiala and of course now to Shasha Market. I mean, the sad um, thing is, you know, just like what you see in Nigeria, the government or the governor will come and say there's a committee set, he's going to set up, there's a panel. Let's just get answers. Let's just yeah. get justice so, for the victims. So, Governor Shaima Kinde has had a pretty rough couple of months. Um, <laughs> good luck to him, and I hope that he is able to step in here as a leader of the state and, and you know, act um, in, a w in ways that would create more peace. There's also traditional rulers. The Alafi of, of Oyo is still very much present and alive, and we hope that these persons sh sh should be able to step in um, at a time like this and ensure that Oyo um, continues to be a very peaceful state. Uh, the, the emotions are heightened, the tension, the, 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 the sentiments, you know, there's so much uh, that the smallest thing right now uh, can create 
um, ethnic crisis that we, you know, we, yes. we can deal with. See, I watched, I've, I've watched a couple of videos, you know, from different countries, you know, in the West, how they advocate patriotism. They don't talk about whether I'm from this state or that state or this region or from the Midwest or wherever. It's patriotism to the country. I think we need, we need a focus on that on, in, in this country. For us to get to a point where our own loyalty, our own, you know, Pride basically is for Nigeria, not just you know when you see somebody at first thing is where are you from? Oh, I'm from this part of the country. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. Then the other person who is not from your tribe is not your brother. Who is not your sister? So I think we all just need to maybe we need to start from the educational system, from my primary schools, from education. You know, preaching yeah. oneness would be would be easier. an intrinsic value for patriotism, unity and loyalty to the motherland, not just would, from would be, my ethnic group or my tribe. It would be a lot easier, and you may not even need to teach it. You just need to make the country work for its citizens. You need to make the country, the security, the healthcare, the education, um, the infrastructure to work for its citizens. Nigerians need to wake up in the morning, get on a train and go and walk in Ibadan, and come back in the, in the, in the evening train, the 4 p.m. train or the 6 p.m. train, and make it back to Lagos or, or even Benin, and, and, be, and leave like that. Nigerians need to wake up in the morning and go to the hospital and know that they have healthcare systems that will take care of them. They need regardless to send their of, kids to school. Regardless, regardless of the ethnicity yeah. of, of, so, of the president. So it makes it easy for you to want to defend your country when you know that your country works for you. True. But when your police is beating you because you wanted to protest, but when you go to the hospital and there's no power and your oxygen, um, you know, your babies uh, um, uh, die because, you know, they, they, they couldn't be incubated well enough, nobody wants to, to be patriotic to that. We'll be back with Bookie November next. Stay with us.